Try to keep this short and sweet this evening, folks. I'm Corey Brad here from the Hawkeye of the Storm in Iowa baseball with uh, a devastating loss. And I, I know that maybe sounds hyperbolic, but if you watch this game and how it panned out and understand the significance and the magnitude of this game, you'd understand why I use such language. The Hawkeyes uh, holding a 4-2 lead heading into the eighth inning. And... Uh, for the second straight day, the Indiana State Sycamores, they are a top 16 seed nationally for a reason. Uh, they find a way to rattle off several runs. I believe, what, five? Five in that, uh, it was four to two, excuse me, if I said four to one. Four to two in the eighth. They rattle off five wins in the eighth. I believe they rattled off eight in the eighth, or, excuse me, three in the eighth uh, yesterday against Wright State. This loss has hit me hard, folks. Um and Iowa loses 7-4, to four, and this is obviously why it's a significant game. Now they have to play North Carolina early tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Central time. If they win that game, they will have to beat Indiana State twice. All right, this is not like the Big Ten tournament where it's not a true double elimination. Remember, in the Big Ten tournament, yeah, you got to lose twice until you get to the final. So last year, I've talked about this. Rutgers, I believe they sweep the board head to the Big Ten Championship game, lose in the Big Ten Championship game, and even though they hadn't lost a game prior, that was it. It's not a true double elimination because once you get the championship game, it's single elimination, not the case with the regional. What I don't know, and maybe somebody in the chat can help me, what I don't know is when that second game would take place. What I can tell you is Iowa will play tomorrow morning against North Carolina again. Now, they beat North Carolina yesterday. They'll have to beat them again tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. It's an elimination game, potentially the last game of the season. And you then bounce back. If you can beat North Carolina, you'll get another date with Indiana State at 5 p.m. later that same day. So, as I said yesterday, and as I said the day before that, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm not a baseball guy by trade, all right, or by nature. So there are there's certain lingo and 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 things that I'm not uh, maybe as up to speed as some people who are who are listening to the show. So be patient with me. Uh, and this is why this is a conversation. I even I even advertise this show this evening on social media as a chat. I want this to be a post game chat. I'm not going to be on here long, maybe 20 to 30 minutes at the most. But uh, I'm curious as to when that second game against Indiana State would be. But the bottom line is, folks, if Iowa wants to advance into a super regional. They got to win three straight games, three straight. Had they won this game, they were up four to two in the eighth. They would have been able to sit out tomorrow morning and then win one of two. One of two. In fact, had it been, let me, let me make this clear. Yeah. One of two, correct? Yeah. One of two. <laughs> it's amazing. The one game, it's amazing how with the double elimination set up, and having double elimination in the championship game or the regional final, that's appropriate, right? It makes sense. It's its its fair. But it's amazing how that one inning tonight, folks, completely changes everything. And, uh, you know, I, I feel terrible for Brody Brecht. Uh, I feel terrible for Llewellyn. I feel terrible for Simpson. The bullpen struggled. It's usually a very deep, solid bullpen. It was really good yesterday. And Max Llewellyn came in yesterday. Excuse me, Luke Llewellyn came in yesterday was phenomenal against a late Tar Heel push. He comes in tonight, Luke did, and uh, well, we had bases loaded, one out. I mean, it's a it's an impossible situation, and it almost looked like he was going to get him through it. Um, bad missed strike call um, 
followed up by a beautiful pitch to get that second out on a strikeout. And I, I know at least me, I can't speak to everybody else watching the game, but at least myself kind of take a dig, big, deep breath in big breath out. And they follow it up. Indiana state does with a uh, two RBI double, which of course gave them uh, the lead. I, I'm, I'm missing the, the, the one run they punched in earlier. So they punched in a run against Simpson. They get a, a two RBI double, which gave them the lead. And then another double, which, which uh, sent in two more runners, another two RBI double. And that was all she wrote. We had to the seventh or excuse me to the ninth. It's amazing in that ninth inning folks. And I'm, I'm just kind of recanting this or recounting this by, by recent memory here. It just happened about 15 minutes ago, but it's amazing in that ninth inning it was a Kyle Huckstorf that, that got to first on a walk. I'm trying to think who was, uh, who was up after, after Kyle, but, uh, an unbelievable uh, outfield play by Indiana State to save a, what would have been a two-run home run. I mean, it looked like it was right along the the uh, the boundary, and I, I think it was probably going to be a home run had uh, the outfielder, whoever that was, Pottinger, I think his name was, for Indiana State, uh, went up and, and made an unbelievable play on the ball. And that's like when a, a DB comes up and, and makes an interception or a wide receiver goes up and, you know, beats great coverage. You tip your cap to the guy and you, and you, you move on, but just heroic stuff from Indiana state. And I mentioned yesterday on the show, I, I kind of questioned what would the crowd be like? Um, and maybe I sold Indiana state fans short a bit. I figured there'd be a lot of Sycamore fans there, but I also thought there'd be a lot of Iowa fans there and there were, but it was predominantly Indiana state fans in that crowd. And that makes sense. It was, uh, of course they're hosting. So bottom line, just really tough folks, just really tough. And you just hope that that inning in this game isn't the one that haunts this team heading into the offseason. You saw Brody Breck there. He just I mean, pitched seven innings, pitched seven innings. And he was phenomenal. Uh, what, 108 pitches I think he threw tonight? That dude is a warrior, and he's a pro, and we've talked about that. But you just feel bad. Uh, you feel bad for everybody around because, uh, you know, again, Luke, Luke Llewellyn had uh, he was the hero yesterday and tonight he's he's feeling like he cost his team and he's certainly not the reason. But uh, give Indiana State credit, but boy, bullpen's got to be better. And now you wonder, you think back to the question marks heading into this game, would it have been better for Iowa to send out Ty Langenberg so you'd have Brody tomorrow for an elimination game? Well, I'm assuming Langenberg will be the guy, right, tomorrow morning. And then. Who pitches in the evening? I, I don't know how that works. Uh, maybe somebody else can help me out on that. I don't know what the recovery time for a guy like Brody Brecht is, but I'm certainly thinking it's not less than 24 hours. Let's get to our first caller. Mr. Doug is on the line. Doug, welcome to the show, sir. Hey, how you doing, Corey? <laughs> I don't know how to get down on baseball, man, but I, you know, I'm, I've become invested in this team just like everybody else, and uh, frustrating. Just, just frustrating. Yeah. Um... You know, I have I, I didn't actually watch the game. I watched it. I listened to it here on YouTube. Um, they had the I don't know, the Hawkeye Learfield broadcast on YouTube. So I don't know exactly on some of those plays what they're talking about. But um, yeah, I just felt bad for the relief pitch, pitcher Luke. Whatever, what's his name? Llewellyn and Simpson. Llewellyn. You know, Simpson kind of got him into the bind. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I'm not blaming anybody specifically, but boy, a, a possible situation for Luke to come in there. Bases low. I mean, he did it yesterday. I don't remember exactly the situation yesterday, but it was a it was a sticky situation yesterday, and he got him out of it. And he almost did it tonight. But that, mm -hmm. college baseball, I, I we talk about a thin margin. I mean, a thin yeah. margin, Doug. I mean, that guy. I know this is this is a juvenile baseball discussion mm -hmm. here, right? But yes, I mean the guy. The guy misses that swing, and I think it. I think he had two strikes. I think it was a two strike count. It. That's it. That's it. We yeah. moved to ninth. I think I, I could be wrong on that, but I have to go back to the count. But the point is, like, it's amazing how quickly the mm -hmm. tide turn, and all of a sudden we go from four to three, and mm -hmm. ninth with Iowa up four to three, and probably in a pretty good place to you're down seven to four. Yeah, like I said, I I, I just want people to realize how it is really cool that we have a baseball team in Iowa. My nephew was uh, yesterday. They, when we, he was watching the game with me, he goes, I was a baseball team too. You know, yeah, they have basketball, baseball, all the sports. They asked, well, sorry, if I'm loud. Um, somebody mentioned that on another comment. 
I'm just using an iPad. So I think it's I think it was Tony yesterday that they were yeah. complaining about. I'll have to say something to Tony. Well, I'm just using an iPad, so I can't. Cont- I mean, it's not like I have equipment or anything. Yeah. Um, Streamyard's <laughs> supposed to control that, Doug. So uh, no okay. Worries. Well, I've been told that too before, and I'm like, I'm not trying to scream at you. <laughs> it's okay. I'm upset too. Don't don't worry. Okay. Um, no, I, I remember in high school, like you know, I'm from Ames area, and I remember in high school when they dropped Iowa State's uh, baseball team. I had uh, some friends that their dads, you know, were affected, and Coach Smith's son was a couple years below me in school at I at Ames High. His dad was an Iowa State coach, and it. it you know, it, it's hard to be a Northern school and play baseball. And I imagine not a lot of teams go to these regionals, even as a two seed and knock off Indiana state twice. So, you know, th- what really hurts is, you know, they had an opportunity. They were ahead in the seventh, you know, so. And, and, the, eighth. and the eighth. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I hope that they can come back. Uh, it sounds like a really tough road you have to play. Yeah, I mean- uh, just amazing how the double elimination setup. I mean, you're rolling, you're you're, you're pitching incredibly well um, with Marcus Morgan yesterday and Brody Breck. Just uh, I, I thought did a tremendous job. Yeah, seven and that's it. I mean, just like that. And now you got to win three games in two days. I'm assuming that th- yeah. I'm assuming that second game against Indiana State would be Monday. I'm assuming they're not going to make like yeah. three games tomorrow. Let's hope not. I mean, I don't think so. So, um, I actually, and again, you might have to go to the chat to answer some of these questions because I don't know if you know, Corey, how many starting pitchers does a D1 or Big Ten team have? I mean, is, is it just the three over the weekend? And, you know, how deep? I, I don't have the answer to that. That's a good question, right? right. I mean, I, 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 obviously, your top three are Morgan, Brecht, and Langenberg, but I, I don't know. Like I say, I don't know what happens tomorrow at five if they get by yeah. North Carolina in the morning. I mean, you've got to send Langenberry out in the morning. I don't know. Do they go back to more? Is Morgan going to be going to be ready a, a day later? <laughs> I'm asking you. I don't know anything about college baseball. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I say, I'm not a baseball guy, Doug. But I want to make sure we have a platform for everybody. Uh, yeah. I can't remember how many innings Morgan pitched yesterday, but Brody threw over 100 pitches tonight. So mm. I would think Brody's done. I mean, yeah. Brody's not going to be able to pitch Monday. He's not going to be. I would think. Now I could be wrong on that. But maybe Morgan, maybe they can get him back for a championship game Monday. But then again, who who pitches tomorrow at five? They got to get past North Carolina. Langenberg's got to come ready to roll tomorrow morning, and they got to flush this. That's a quick, quick turnaround. Um, again, has Iowa had again yesterday um, that Luke kid guys out of there? Does Iowa have a good bullpen, or is that an issue yeah. they've had over the season? That that is, I, I'd like to think that that has been the strength. Okay. Has been the bullpen. And I brought up Llewellyn yesterday. If it wasn't for Llewellyn yesterday, they they may not have made it to this game. They've been playing right state tonight or this yeah. morning. So no, I mean I I I I'll be completely honest. When when Luke came in there to relieve Simpson, I thought, okay, he's he's gonna get us out of this. Even though it was an impossible situation, he you know, he came up with a, a really uh solid at bat. Uh, I don't even know who was batting, but uh struck him out and then you you come back and just like I say one one pitch and then it just snowballs right I mean you get one you get an RBI double or two RBI double and, and you follow it up with another one and then the, the play in the ninth the defensive play by the the outfielder Pottinger just incredible play I don't know what well, who's calling these games on the Learfield network do you know I have no idea who they are I, I it um uh, like I said, it's on YouTube. You can rewatch it if you or re-listen to it if you want. I don't. I don't. I've never done that, but I'm just curious. What did he? What did he? Uh, how did he react to the the ninth inning grab by the Indiana, Indiana State outfielder? Do you know? They they were happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, they were it making was, a lot. It was an impressive play. I mean, it's a it's probably a Sports Center top ten play. Yeah, that's what they described it. Um, never, I haven't watched sport other than Scott Van Pelt. I haven't watched Sports Center in years. Oh, you ain't missing much, but um, um, no, they were making a lot of comments about Terre Haute and the the fans there, and I've drove through Terre Haute. It's not a nice place. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What's wrong with Terre Haute? Uh, think of it. I, I don't want to compare it to some Iowa towns, but it's uh, it, it's not a Midwest city. It's a Southern city. Is it like Cherokee? Is it like Cherokee? 
Uh, that might be a close comparison. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, again, I don't want to badmouth some Iowa towns here, but uh, Terre Haute, and even in Indiana, they have jokes about Terre Haute. So, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of their, uh, you know, people from Indianapolis have some jokes about Terre Haute. And, uh, but, you know, I don't want to call anyone a redneck because I, I live here in Story County. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, no, I just, you know, I'm hoping that uh, the baseball team can pull a couple off. But even if not, um, you know, I, I don't want to go back to basketball. That's my bread and butter. But, you know, they haven't been to the Omaha since 72. And, and you know, like, I, I think it's amazing. Like I said, there's niche sports in Iowa when people, you know, support them and don't support them. And, you Is know, I try to support niche sport uh, for college, I would say, isn't it? I mean, they don't have more than a couple thousand hardcore followers do they not a niche, not a niche sport down south but uh in yeah Iowa, maybe yeah that's why i meant midwest four major universities don't have a program anymore a d1 well, program. well i guess that was something i would talk about i think iowa has an opportunity to be a very good program uh yeah. considering we play they summer good, baseball but they, look, Doug, they are a very good program yeah i mean are they, are they elite no mm-hmm. right but it's hard to be elite they're, i mean they're one of three teams that made the the uh the championship out of the Big Ten. I mean, the Big Ten is just so disadvantaged with the schedule and and everything, yeah. just seeding and. I mean, look, the Big Ten's. I don't know what Indiana and Maryland did today, but mm. I know all three Big Ten teams won yesterday. That's and awesome. I think, I think it's a better conference than people think, but yeah, like, it's this is why the details matter in a team like Indiana State. Why why they're a top sixteen seed? Why do they start in February? Like, why why can't you move back the season? You mentioned I, that. I know Rick Keller. Rick Keller has been an advocate for pushing this thing back. And I don't know if with USC joining the fray, they're no power program right now. But I don't know if that will help to, you know, pull, you know mm-hmm. poli- I mean, this is all politics, right? I mean, it's yeah. the powers that be that make the decisions and the powers that be obviously like the SEC and the ACC dominating things, especially the, the SEC for the most part. That's the conference that really dominates. So mm-hmm. how are you going to get those programs and those conferences to agree to push this mm-hmm. back? Um, I don't have the answer to that. What's ironic about it is the first game of the season back in February, Iowa beat this Indiana State team in 11 tough innings with a, with a Kyle Huckstork grand slam. So, I mean, this team is, has – they had to earn it to get here. They had yeah. to win in tough conditions and with a conference that is disadvantaged. So – you give them credit. It's been a memorable season. You just hope that they yeah. can pull some magic out of their hats these next two days. Well, and I want everyone to know I'm very proud and I've been following it. You know, I, you know, I, I, I'll, I always support the Hawks at any sport. You know, uh, women's wrestling to uh, lacrosse if we have a lacrosse team. Um, but my last thing I was going to mention because we mentioned Grant Nelson. Uh, my shirt is of BJ Mac. I went on his. Yes, I, t- I have. Okay, I I went on uh, Instagram and told BJ Mac that uh, I would order five of his shirts if he comes to Iowa. Well, he didn't come. And then the person who comes back to me will order them before he comes to Iowa, and and I go no oh, order oh. one before he comes to Iowa. So I ordered. A, so I have a BJ Mac shirt, <laughs> and I go, no, I only bought one because I told him he has to come me come to. Sorry, I'm yelling. I told him he had to come to Iowa for me to get the other four. So how much? How much? Uh, how much was it? Let me just ask Twenty you bucks. Twenty bucks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that shirt, no offense. Not, the shirt looks fine, but the shirt is meaningless now, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I was like, so I wanted to tell you that story. I was trying with the NIL stuff to help. I was like, hey, dude, if you you come here, I'll buy five of your shirts. <laughs> but. <laughs> I'm glad because the, the rep was trying to sell me them, but he goes, why don't you buy them before he comes there? I said, I'll buy one before he comes here because I'm pretty sure I'm going to look for it very foolish. So <laughs> say, at least you came onto the show with the shirt on, Doug. I yeah. Don't do the same with Grant Nelson. I did see that he has scheduled visits to uh, Alabama. Uh, I believe Arkansas, which I guess I wasn't, I wasn't mm-hmm. uh, aware that he was, uh, that Arkansas was still pushing for him hard. Arkansas pushes for every transfer. That's very it true. is, and then yeah. I think Baylor, and then obviously Fran, they're trying to get him here. So, I again, I don't want to echo. I did hear this from some, but I heard this on a message board that Brad was on 
that they are waiting for the students to come back in two weeks and Grant will. And you said like DJ, he could, or Brandon minor, he might commit this weekend, but yeah, exactly. We it, talked about that yesterday is yeah, it just, might, uh, you know, you can say, well, we've got a visit schedule. That don't mean he's going to come. Yeah. You know, that's and, why I mean, it didn't used to, I don't think it used to be that way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to an extent it did with recruiting guys could commit on the spot, but ideally with the big name prospects, they're going to take all their visits. And if you can at least get a visit scheduled, get them on a campus. Now guy comes to, to visit and, you know, you, you say, Hey, we'll give you X amount. If you don't take any more visits. Yeah. I'm not saying that. Ha- I'm not saying that happened with Caleb uh, Brown for Iowa mm-hmm. football, but let's just say, I think there's a reason he didn't, there's a solid reason he didn't wait to take any yeah. more. Visits. I'll say that. And that's just the nature of the, of the game right now. Yeah. And well, going back to what I was saying about uh, people need to kind of just be patient with the thing with the portal, because if we got BJ Mack, we wouldn't even be talking about Grant Nelson right now. So, you know, things kind of work themselves out. But Grant Nelson is uh, – well, what do you mean? What do you mean it wouldn't – I mean – We wouldn't have a scholarship. Uh, well, we don't, do, we, do we really have a scholarship right now? I'd have to think about back to the – how many scholarships are we at? I guess we, 12. Does have, you're right. If, if Nimmer stays off scholarship, they've got a scholarship. Correct. And, uh, yeah, I – I should have listened to the message boards anyway, but um, yeah, I just, uh, hopefully everything works out and hopefully uh, we get two good days of baseball. And I like, I don't know. I would think about going to Fayetteville if they or Arkansas, if they would make it. Sure. Um, sure. I mean, I would think about it. Um, I don't know how, how when that would quite work. But super regional. When would that super regional be? Do you know? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, wouldn't it be? I'd imagine. Of next week. Yeah. Okay. That's right. what somebody told me. Okay. It, it's next week. It, 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 it Kind of like a Sweet 16, you know. Okay. It is a Sweet 16. That's the three series over the weekend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, be- I believe they don't do any – I don't know. People – again, we were both not baseball guys, so I don't think they play double headers or two games in the same day as the Super Regionals. I could be wrong. I wouldn't why, – why would you? Yeah, I don't yeah. – yeah, I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, again, great talking to you, like always, Corey. Um, we'll see how this weekend goes. Um but yeah, I, I it's great to have uh, something to cheer for in June. You know that you watch. I'm not trying to be negative, Nancy, but we're all celebrating all this. Iowa baseball will lose tomorrow, and then Grant Nelson commits to Baylor. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just, just just as fast as we get up here, we just get shot down here. <laughs> well, that's Iowa sports for you. I mean, that's that's just being a Hawkeye. I mean, <laughs> I'm not trying to be negative, but it, it is what it, it is. It really is being a Hawkeye. There's a reason why our fan base is the way it is. You know, we, we, we get our hopes up and we just get kicked to the I know. jewels. All right, Doug. But, yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, Carlton Banks. Oh, first of all, Pete, he says, can they still play into the championship game? Yes, but they got to win two tomorrow. They got to win two tomorrow, Pete. One against North Carolina and one against... Indiana State, they don't beat North Carolina. They won't play Indiana State. Very simple. Elimination game tomorrow at 11 a.m. on ESPN+. Plus. Carlton says, could McCaffrey have helped? Connor McCaffrey? I, again, I, I am no authority to, to comment on what Connor would have brought to this team. I can tell you that uh, I think Connor made a wise decision in sticking with basketball. I know there was a lot of talk when he was coming out of high school that he was going to be a pro baseball player. Maybe he would have found a way to 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 play at some level, but I think this team is pretty darn. Uh, I don't want to say loaded. That's the wrong the wrong word. I don't know that Connor McCaffrey would have been the uh, the end all be all for this team to win tonight or or any other game. I mean, perhaps, but uh, boy, it's, that's a totally different conversation. It's so hard to do what Dane and Hughes did when he did it now, uh, and that's we saw that with Brody Brecht. I mean, he had to give up football a year in. So yeah, I don't. I. I don't know how to answer that question. Maybe, but it's hard to hard to. I don't think it's uh, apples to apples to apples. I should say that. Um, okay, uh, Alan brings up an interesting point. Number two, Florida lost to Texas Tech tonight, so they'll also have to win three times in two days. Let's go to our next caller. James has been waiting on hold. James, welcome to the show. Give me one sec. Sorry. Sure. Well, we'll we'll bring you back, James. Let's go over to Tony. Tony, welcome to the show. How you doing? I got ripped for your volume being way too loud. I know. I I re-listened to that last night. <laughs> I got a new mic. It wasn't no, that I, bad. But it was not that bad. But everybody wants to make a big deal out of everything. So just you know. Yeah, I've been. Um, I get what you were saying last night because you're talking about getting views. I'm in like a 
it's a 30 team fantasy baseball league and we do like a fun podcast for that so i mean we're lucky to get like 30 50 views you know just so i get like you need to have the views to make this work. Well, I, I want to make, I, I know I said that yesterday. I want to tell, we got 35 people watching it. And I honestly, I'll be, I'll be totally frank with you right now, Tony. All right. When this game went final, I thought to myself, I could go on for a post game. I didn't have it scheduled yet. I could go on for a post game or I could go fishing. I really, I, I'm serious. 100% serious. I had a long day. I thought I can go out and throw the line in for an hour or I can go on a post game. I thought, no. I promised people that I was going to do a post game show. I don't have any sponsors for these po- these baseball post game shows, but I want to be as regular and consistent for people on here. Even though none of our baseball coverage has even hit a thousand views for a video, that's just yeah. what it is. And yeah. Tony, when 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 like I can say when views don't go up, it's not a matter of not making money. I don't care about the money that's being made off ad revenue. That that's and I don't care about that. What I care about is that's bringing the entire channel down. Exactly. Because then YouTube recommends you less, and you know how this works. It's all about algorithms. So I'm just explaining to people how why there would even be a hesitancy for me to do a post game show, but from baseball, even when they win, because there's not enough people that that are tuning on to view. So I want to do it. It's just hard. You're about to get a special guest, so I'm sorry. So, ah, sorry. the the Tony, <laughs> the Tony Junior. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, no, it was um, it, it was rough, like you said that that home run Robin catch. And uh, it, it was just one of those things where, you know, you just, you tip your cap and what else can you do? I, I, you know, I see people, I see people ripping uh, um, Heller for not pulling the pitcher or whatever, but I mean, yeah, hi <laughs> um, for not pulling the pitcher and everything. But I mean, it was just, that was a, a hard hop that um, Seegers had to take on that that one where then they got first and second. It could have been a double play. I mean, what can you do? Well, he and also then, has, I don't know why he, you know, said he, he also he hesitated. Me. Yeah. Cause he, he, he looked like he was going to go to second. First. Why, why would you go to second? You waited so long for that yeah. hop. You're not, you're not turning a double play there. Yeah. And I understand the thought of getting, uh, uh, you know, short throw to second for an out, but boy, at that point you, you, you just, you want to get out of there. And I, I know you don't want guys in scoring position, but I know it's easy for me to say, and he's one of the best short stops out there. So, yeah, nope, I get you. I, I did take that. He did take a long time to field that, and I'm thinking, all right, let's get the ball to first, and he just took too long. It's a, it's a long throw across the field. Oh, yeah, for sure. And and then the one where it was just kind of a bloop, and then it was in between the shortstop and the left fielder, and, you know, yeah. just what what can you do? Then? Is it fair to say that's what, that's where Major League Baseball is different than college baseball? Like, there's a lot of different types of plays that I've seen in college baseball here in the last – couple of weeks that I just when I watch the major leagues I don't see it's just the same thing like the the mistakes that we see in college football get cleaned up a lot in the NFL the same thing when you go up the level you don't see those types of things you know right and um I mean I I don't think anyone's really to blame it's just they were the better team tonight that's really all you can... I mean you just got to feel so bad for I, yeah. I know that Llewellyn and but for Brody Breck he's sitting there and he pitches seven tough innings, and he's throwing 95 miles an hour, you know, late in the sixth inning and in the seventh inning. I'm just thinking, and I, I saw the comment in here about uh, Robert says, I would have left Brody in there, you know, to pitch the eight. I don't he couldn't have. Boy, I, 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 it's, I'm not disagreeing with you, Robert, but I just think I, from a coaching standpoint, how do you defend with how good Iowa's bullpen has been? How do you defend leaving Brody Brecht in there? For an eighth inning, an eighth yeah. inning, he's thrown over. He's thrown 108 pitches. I, I think that's tough. Yeah. And I mean, you had you really what we only go through two or three bullpen arms yesterday. I mean, we still had a decent amount left in the bullpen. It just an unlucky hit here, a little bloop there, and you walk the guy, and that's why everyone say walks matter. You know, you hit the first guy, and then you walk the run in, and yeah, that, that's what happens. You know. So, well, we'll see what happens tomorrow morning. They got uh, they got a North Carolina team that uh, they've beaten already this weekend, and they get an Indiana State team. If they can beat North Carolina, they'll get the same Sycamore team that they should have beaten today. Yeah. So I guess from that perspective, we I could see them getting to Monday, but boy, it's going to take a lot because it's a quick turnaround. You got to play two in one day. And your last those two games against Indiana State, I mean, you're not going to get any of these top three guys. If, if they, yeah, do, I, if, I, if I don't they know who do. they're going to get. 
I don't know who, who are they gonna get. Tell me who it, they're gonna it'd get. A, it'd be a bullpen game, and that's what they'll, that's what it that's what it'll be. And by the time you, but by the time the same thing you do, if you win Sunday, Monday is gonna be a bullpen game for Indiana State too, because they'll have went through their three starters on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you don't think it's possible for a guy to turn around Friday to Monday? He's not going to pitch a full allotment. He's not going to go a starter's allotment. You know, he's going to go like Marcus Morgan did in the Big Ten tournament championship game, where what he went like twenty-eight pitches and two innings or something like that, or you know, a low amount. Like he'll do is all. They'll probably get like maybe two innings and piecemeal it together, but that's all you're really going to get out of one of those starters. Yeah. Yeah. And he is, what is he eligibility wise? Like, how did that work, Brecht? What is, how does, do you know how that works? Because he played football and he played baseball. Like, how many years would he have left to play baseball? I guess I don't know. I, I'm assuming he's got three years left after this year. Uh, or two know. after this year. He would have two after this year, I believe. Okay, two after this year. Right? Okay. Yeah, Burton I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Last year, he didn't redshirt last year. So he's, I would assume that means he's got two years left. He's yeah. past the COVID. COVID time frame. By the way, Robert does not agree with us about taking Brecht out. He says that they should have limited lots of to do it. So. Yeah, I just feel that the, the the difference between the Indiana State pitcher and Brecht is Brecht is more of that power pitcher, where the Indiana State pitcher is more like a control. Fair. Very fair. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna let you go. Uh, All right, Tony. My my special guest wants to keep playing around. So. Okay. We'll All right. I hope to talk to you tomorrow, Tony. Will do. Yep. Uh, yeah. We'll get that. So. All right. All right, folks, let's get to James, who's back on the line, I believe, with us. James, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up? Oh, not much. How are you? So, sorry, I was uh, busy for a second, but... You're good. Anyways, no, I don't know how... First off, you're talking about eligibility. I think it works the same, because, like, technically, is like, it's just, like, based off of, like, what he does. So, like, it's like Connor was doing. So, like, if you're a freshman, redshirt in one sport, but then you don't redshirt in the other, you can still have eligibility in one, but not in the other, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? So, like, so like, if he was a sophomore in baseball but a freshman in football, he'd have an extra year of eligibility in football, but he wouldn't have it in baseball, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because they're two different sanctions. That's a good point. Brecht is not going to be here for the length of his yeah. own. Well, I, I forget how baseball works. I think it's three. I think he needs to be there for three. It's either two or three, for sure. But I think yeah, Michael says, uh, from what he knows, players at a four-year school can enter the MLB draft after three years at that. Yeah, three. Three, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought get him three, for one more year, probably. It, it would be my guess. For sure, but the only thing that scares me about tomorrow is, like you said, pitching. I mean, that doesn't scare me about. To- it doesn't scare me about the morning. It scares me about the. It scares me about night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, you can throw Langenberg. Langen's you well, gotta throw Langenberg but, tomorrow morning. But then, right? but then, what are you gonna do tomorrow night? Is there so? Let me ask you this: Is there a situation? I know it's an elimination game. Is there a situation where the scouting report could dictate to the coaching staff, "Hey, let's throw a bullpen game early and save Langenberg"? Yeah, but you night. see, you see the way the bullpen looked. I know that's the thing. Lately, that's the only scary part. Is the yeah. bullpen doesn't look good. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you get more. Can, can Morgan pitch Sunday night and give you? They they seemed like they wanted to keep him at a certain number on the last game pitch. Instead, they wanted to keep him at a hundred. And I don't know if that was for a reason. You know, but you, you know what I'm saying? Is not. No, no, I'm not saying it's like a it's a high number still, but I'm yeah, saying like I'm saying I'm saying they still wanted to keep him at a number. So I don't know if they were kind of like you know trying to. Plot it out just in case they did, sure. you know what I mean? Because like that kind of seems like if you're sticking to a certain number, that seems like you have an idea of even if you lose that there's something going on there. Yeah. But I feel like you have you might have to go to a bullpen game. It's just the bullpen has looked not very good, so it kind of scared me this last yeah. two games. It's looked good up until tonight. I mean, Christofferson, with all due, let's all be real. Christofferson struggled yesterday as well. Yeah, it could, I just feel like they couldn't find his own. I don't know. I mean, I wonder people too are like. I don't know if they should have pulled him earlier, but maybe. But, I mean, you just run yourself into that situation where it's like you just got in too far behind. And, like you said, Seegers shouldn't have. He, I don't even think he should have looked to throw it. Like he should have just threw it the first right away. Like, the I, way the ball bounced, you shouldn't. Right? That's one thing I know, too. And they were saying on but, TV, they were like. But, but James, the, the correct baseball play is to throw the second there. Yeah. But they were saying on the TV, they're like, bad hop, or like it was about bad this. And I was like, no, he hesitated, trying to go to second, took his time to go to first, and then didn't get any either out. But I'd rather get one out than get none. 
Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even I if mean, it's the auto first. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather get one out than none. And at that point, when you're that deep in the hole, more than likely, like, I mean, how deep he was getting the ball, more than likely you're not going to get him at second. So just throw it the first right away. Right. No, I agree. I, I incredibly frustrating and, um, you know, I don't so, know. I, I mean, back to a Don Patterson mantra, and I think it was actually a Hayden Fry mantra prior, but how do you need an elephant eat one bite at a time? So tomorrow morning, they got to beat their, their, their job is to beat North Carolina. So my guess is they'll throw out Langenberg because he's their best option, clearly their best option. And you throw him out there, you win. And okay, now we regroup. What's our plan for five? And yeah. we'll have a few hours to prep for 5 p.m. What are we going to do? And let's do it. And then let's get to Monday. So, but one bite at a time, you can't look at the three games together. I'm sure that's what Rick Heller is doing. He's focusing on North Carolina. For sure. I mean, that's all you can do, but it's just a tough way to lose, especially being up 42. I mean, yesterday, they let it, yesterday they let it slip away a little bit too. I mean, they won still, but you know, they kind of got to get away from them a little bit too. So it's kind of like back to back days. You got to get away from you this nope. time. It cost you the last time it didn't. So it's like, it just scares you for the future. And I feel like if they would have gave up, one or two, like if it had been five four, I think you would feel a little comfortable. But at seven four, it kind of was like not not comfortable, but you don't have a chance. At seven four, it's kind of like that's like out of reach in your eyes. If that makes sense. you run home run, if that that home run sing, uh, slips through in the ninth, uh, no outs, and it's a one score game, and momentum shifts back to you. You never know, but but yeah, I agree. When once it hits seven four, you that second RBI double, I thought uh, okay, th- this is over. So, and, but one more thing about that missed call. He he missed a strike call, but we struck him out the next play. So pretty much we struck him out the yeah struck him out the next play. It was a terrible missed call though. Terrible. It's like right down the it's like right down the middle. I was like, bro, what are you? I, I have not seen, and again, I'm, I'm not not some baseball like I've not seen a worse Mitch missed call. I don't even understand. And then they're trying to say it was high, and I was watching. It was a little high, but it was a little high. It was top. It was okay. It was it was. uh a little bit higher than middle of the strike zone. How was that? Yeah. Is that but fair? like it wasn't high in no. retrospect of like a ball high. Bad call. Bad, bad call. For sure. But we'll see what happens. And obviously, hopefully, we can keep it going. But nope. I'm glad they got here, like I said. And hopefully, we represent the Big Ten pretty well, you know, because everybody talks about the Big Ten when they get to March Madness. And even here, I think Indiana won. Did they win last game? I don't know if they won today, but I think they won yesterday. Somebody said it was in a, uh, somebody said it was in a, uh, Rain delay, I believe, right? I think they won yesterday, though. I think I'm saying, I think Indiana won yesterday. I don't know. Who's the comment from? Uh, Alan said that Indiana beat Kentucky five to three, and Maryland and Wake is in a rain delay. Yeah. So hopefully some of the Big Ten can represent for us because, you know, we only have three teams in. So it's a little harder for us. You know, we got it. I think this is kind of a point where you have to prove yourself a little bit. In fact, you only got three teams in, you know, one of them power five. Indiana's but, doing it, and Iowa nearly did it. We'll see. I mean, right. Wake is Wake is obviously going to be a, a tall order. That's a tough region, but uh, all yeah. right, go enjoy your night. Go throw that fish and pull in the water. Okay, thanks, James. <laughs> yeah, all right, bye. Thank you, sir. All right, folks. Appreciate everybody being here, and uh, appreciate the thirty some people. Forty, I think we got up to forty at one point. I know it's not the same as our our football and basketball post game shows, but I want to make sure you guys have an outlet and, and we can chat about this because it is NCAA uh, championship season with with college baseball and. Uh, Tough loss. I mean, as, as great as yesterday felt, this is a tough one to swallow. The Hawkeyes will bounce back. We'll try to bounce back against North Carolina in Terre Haute tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Central Time on ESPN+. Plus. The winner of that game will uh, advance to play Indiana State at 5 p.m. Central Time, uh, but they'll have to win two in a row. The, the winner of this game will have to win two in a row against Indiana State, one of which will be played, I believe, on Monday. Loser tomorrow morning between Iowa and UNC is done their season over uh remember folks i've got the uh i believe we've got the let me throw it up in the live chat for everybody uh, you have not done so already i encourage you to please visit our sponsor aura and get a free trial it's a free trial folks of aura learn how aura can help you and protect your information i threw it up in the chat it's also in the live or in the uh, description of this video as well be sure to like and subscribe folks if you're interested in sponsoring any of the coverage here from the hawkeye of the storm be, be sure to reach out to me here's my email from the eye of the storm at outlook.com again that's from the eye of the storm at outlook.com and i'll plan on talking to you tomorrow 
despite the loss tonight. Hopefully Iowa can bounce back and win three straight to advance to a super regional. We'll talk to you soon.